Hello, how are you guys doing? It's been a week since you've heard from me. I've been battling illness all week, so I couldn't really do the Champions League games without it sounding horrific. Just didn't have the energy to do it either to make it somewhat watchable. So I had to miss out on those games and I had to miss out on a couple of the weekend games. But I'm back now, feeling okay. Do you guys care? Maybe not. But I just thought I'd give you a bit of information as to why I didn't upload for the last week. But we're back for Arsenal versus Manchester United at Old Trafford, which finished 1-0 to Arsenal. Not bad from a Manchester United point of view, with the injuries they had coming into it, with the form they had coming into it, I think everyone would be forgiven for thinking that this was going to be a one-sided mauling. And United weren't as bad as they were. You know, they kept a decent shape throughout, even had a couple of bright moments on the counter-attack, but it felt like a game that Arsenal consistently had Manchester United right where they wanted them, and they didn't really look exposed to the point where... You remember Raya having to make a bunch of saves. But we're going to go over why that happened and what the game plan was from either team. We'll start off with the United attacking phase. So when United try and build that from the back, the centre-back split. Amrabat, or whoever the holding midfielder is coming into this hole here. Full-backs pushed slightly further on and the wide players staying right up top with Hoyland and McTominay and Maynou in the middle. And we see similar patterns where Evans will look to come in and play this central role, which brings Dallow a bit further back. And we saw it on Monday Night Football last night that Dallow coming back into this position would cause Ben White to make a decision of whether he comes up to Mark Dallow or whether he stays back and takes care of Garnacho. He got caught in between a few times and Onana was able to find this pass here or this long-range pass here. It did force United long multiple, multiple times. And that was kind of their way of trying to break this press was to get the ball up to here to Hoyland who could use his strength to try and pin a centre back back and, and recycle possession. McTominay the same thing over to win his aerial duels and to get it to Garnacho and Diallo as quickly as possible. Diallo would typically come inside a bit more to try and offer a bit more support in the middle and he does have the quality to take it in central areas which would push Juan Bissaka on more which isn't his strength Juan Bissaka he's not a, an overlapping fullback I think we've seen that. And conversely, on the other side, you'd have uh, Garnacho maintaining the width as Dallo looked to rush inwards and invert into this area here, which he's a lot more comfortable doing. But again, Arsenal's press and structure was top class. They're the best pressing team in the league. Uh, Havertz would move towards Andre Onana from Casemiro to try and close him down. Trossard would follow in behind. Obviously, you'd get Odegaard stuck to Amrabat. Saka coming in inside more to Johnny Evans. So the only real option they had to play out was that left-hand side. Or direct over the top and you say Arsenal just managed those transitional situations really well and even if Ahmad Diallo came inside Tommy Asu would follow him in and try and prevent him from getting on the ball in these deeper areas to progress the play so structured decently high press but the thing is with Arsenal they don't have a go-to defensive structure they're good in just about every facet of defensive play that you can you can set upon in terms of a game plan so, great in the high press, which they did numerous times, especially in the first half. Fantastic in a low block, which we're going to move to now. So it is worth noting, when Arsenal sat deep, they sat deep. No space in behind, everyone back, which meant that they weren't uh, a particularly effective counter-attacking team. And I always feel like without Martinelli, they really lack a top-class counter-attacking threat. Because Kai Havertz wants the ball into feet, he'll, he'll drop off. Odegaard obviously wants it to feet. Saka isn't one that... Uh, gets the ball in behind, he wants it to feet to take on a player. Trossard doesn't have the pace to get in behind. So, th there wasn't a counter-attacking threat. They sat deep and and soaked up the pressure and, and prevented United from really uh, being able to attack the box because United's game plan was simple. Uh, try and get the ball to the wide areas of the switch of play as quick as possible and have the wide player isolate the fullback and attack him one-on-one. -on -one. So specifically, Garnacho on Ben White, who he did get a lot of change out of. The only issue is Garnacho's delivery was very erratic, very, uh, I was going to say inconsistent, but no, it was pretty consistent. The only problem is it was poor. And again, you'd have Hoyland and McTominay playing as the striker too in this position, uh, trying to find angles in behind or in either side of Saliba and Gabriel. Uh, Saliba had a fantastic game, given man of the match, and just defend that he's so good. If Arsenal win the league this season, it'll be because of him. You'd have the fullbacks inverting with the wide players staying wide. Typically, again, there'd be a lot more inversion. Dallow can come out wide and the occasional time Garnacho came inside. Conversely, wan staying wide, Diallo coming into this space, which happens a lot more frequently. And whoever was in that inverted space would drop in a little bit to connect with the midfielders just to help progress the play on. The only issue is, is 
Arsenal's real compact shape prevented space. United didn't move the ball quick enough. There was two, three touches before passing, so mainly taking a few touches here. Maybe draws Declan Rice along, which creates the pass to wan who again takes a touch, Trossard covers around, prevents any progressive pass that could maybe go into the striker's feet. Just taking too long with their decisions. He didn't have a, it felt like a designed way to try and play out. And even times with Arsenal pushing so deep, you know, were really able to push their numbers forward. Maybe Amrabat moving forward here, but again, just couldn't break down that Arsenal shape. Wasn't a terrible performance from United, but they just were against the best defence in the league. And, and Arsenal were so structured. The reaction of the players around them when the ball goes past their line. So let's say if Hoyland found space here, he was pinning Gabriel back. The reaction of Declan Rice, Trossard, of Partey to get back and try and close the player down was top draw. And it just demonstrates why they are in the position they're in and why they could end up winning the league. And also, you'd get the wingers from Arsenal dropping into former back six if the fullbacks pushed on high and tried to create wide overloads. Disciplined, just fantastic performance, you really have to say. The, the discipline throughout this Arsenal team is huge. We've gone over why Arsenal kept the clean sheet. I'm going to go over now why Arsenal won the game. Okay, so we'd see a mixture of build-up shapes from Arsenal. They do it in a 2-4-4. They do it in their 3-2 five formation with Tommy Asu and Vern, or they'd just have Thomas Partey as the single pivot and Rice and Odegaard would play almost like a diamond with Havertz. Uh, it was a lot of fluidity in the movement and the shape of that midfield, uh, if you include Havertz in it as well. So, again, it was all about congesting the middle, but United defensively, can't believe I'm saying this, did really well to counteract it. They were structured brilliantly, um, maybe brilliantly is a bit harsh, but just after what it's been like over the last little while, it's been it's a definite improvement, and I felt like they they stemmed the flow of Arsenal's progression really well, and they reacted to each uh, movement of shape. So let's say if it was in this position with Party playing holding, and you'd have Tommy Esso and Ben White split, you'd have Hoyland and McTominay up alongside Thomas Partey. You'd have Diallo in between Tommy Asu and Rice, and you'd have Garnacho likewise on the other side with White and Odegaard. You'd have mainly pressed up on White, I've got him the other way around, and Amrabat on Odegaard, which left Havertz a bit free. But you would see either one of two things. If he was to drop into space, he'd be followed by Casemiro. If he was to look for the long option, he'd then move over to Johnny Evans' side. So let's say if David Rye played that ball here, he'd try and win any flick-ons. But... I thought Kai Havertz had a really poor game in the sense of he was beaten in the air by Johnny Evans tons of times and he didn't collect the ball well enough from these deeper areas and progress it. He obviously contributed to the goal, helped by Casemiro playing roughly majority of Stratford on side. But in terms of these transitional phases from Arsenal bringing the ball deep, they dealt really well. And United's forward press would also adapt very well to the changes in formation, as I've just said. So let's just say if Declan Rice dropped, Copamania would follow him. You then get Hoyland pushing up to try and take care of the centre backs and, and mark them, and it would turn into more of a 4 1 4 1 shape with McTominay moving over to party to try and match him up man for man in that midfield zone. Again, this opened the space up for Habits to drop, which Casemiro followed, and naturally the fullbacks would mark the wingers. Uh, again, Odegaard would sometimes drop, which would bring Amrabat further forward, and this type of thing would maybe push. Saka inside, which who would be followed by Dallas. So it was a mix of zonal, mix of man marking. Hallelujah, it's what we've been crying out for, Tenog. Garnacho did a good job of tracking Ben White's forward movements. So it felt like they always had a an option for the transition. And and they defended, as I said, really well when uh, Arsenal did go to their back three shape. And the fantastic thing about Arsenal is just their movement in between shapes. It, it takes a certain kind of mentality and a, and a smart group of players to be able to consistently pull this off. Uh, and be comfortable transitioning this way, but I guess it just goes to show what familiarity and you know work on the training ground can do. So here we go. We've got Tomiyasu inverted here, and again, sort of similar in terms of the principles. Wide players would be marked by the fullbacks. Uh, Kai Havertz would try and pick either of these players to move on to, but generally because Declan Rice was pushed up on the left hand side, it meant he was more looking for the aerial against Evans, who, as I said. He lost two time and time again. Casemiro would push up to Rice if this angle got opened up and did very well with it. Amrabat still took care of Odegaard, but it meant Mainu could push up onto Tomiyasu and might be playing from progression here as McTominay did on Partey. Hoyland was the spare man, and what would trigger Hoyland would be if this pass went to Ben White, Garnacho would spring into action and try and press, who would then push the ball back to Saliba as Hoyland would push on. Diallo coming into the other side on Gabriel and vice versa. Uh, if it was to progress on the left-hand side, forcing the ball back to Raya, who would then try and launch the ball upfield to Havertz, which Johnny Evans won time and time again. 
Obviously, Arsenal have their ways of playing out. Uh, there was a few times where they did manage to link up where Trossard would make the sort of lateral movement across from wan and collect the ball, and his movement's so smart. I don't know who it was, if it was Gary Neville or Jamie Carragher, and I compared him to Lundberg, and if you're old enough to remember Lundberg, you can see it. Not blessed with pace, not even a particularly amazing player to watch on the ball. Like, he's not a great dribbler, but just positionally smart movement, top draw, and he gets a large amount of attacking contributions that way. You just wouldn't want to mark him because you'd, you'd never know where he is at every point in the game. As a result, Arsenal didn't really have many chances on the goal. Uh, I thought it looked a little bit better when Martinelli came on and they had that direct option over the top uh, and Anana faced a couple more saves. But good defensive performance from Ten Hag. Too little, too late in my opinion. I think you can't sort of forget and forgive how bad it's been over the last nine months and the idea that injuries have caused... United's performances, I think, is kind of disproven by this because it's just shown that he can set up a defence with the injuries he has. That I always feel like injuries affect your attack more than it does your defence because I always feel like that lack of individual quality prevents you from winning games, but you can still remain structured, you can still remain compact, and you can still just remain defensively solid. But credit where it's due, prevented it from becoming a basketball score, which is what everyone predicted coming into this game, and, and United held their own. And if it wasn't for a poor mistake from Casemiro at the back for the Arsenal goal, who knows what could have happened. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your opinion. Cheers for watching, lads.